It's all plastics. If you're fishing, you're probably using some. Uh, I figured today I'd do a real quick video on some of the basic things you're going to need if you're wanting to start making your own soft plastics. Uh, some of the safety stuff. It's, it's really easy process, but it can also be pretty dangerous. I'm going to go over the stuff you need, uh, stuff you need to stay safe, and hopefully we can make some baits. Let's do it. For uh, safety stuff, you're going to need a pair of gloves. Don't skip this step. Uh, I learned the hard way last summer. Uh, I got burned real bad. And uh, this plastic heats up to over 350 degrees. And if you can imagine getting hot molten plastic on your hand or anywhere on your body, it... Uh, it's not like touching something hot where you can just let go. It sticks to your skin. So, please wear gloves if nothing else. Also, this plastic, as you would think, I mean, plastic's pretty bad for the environment, period. Uh, it's, it's a good idea to wear a respirator. This stuff's going to put out some fumes. You're going to want to do this outside uh, in like a shed or a garage. I'm doing mine in my garage. Uh, you want it to be well ventilated. Um, you know, it'd be a good idea to hook a fan up or something, kind of blow these fumes outside. Also, safety glasses would also be a good option. Uh, you don't want to get no hot molten plastic in your eyeball. I'm assuming that would hurt pretty bad, and I'm not, I'm hoping that I never experienced that. Okay, now as far as the, the tools you're going to need to get the job done, you're going to need some liquid plastic. Get you a Pyrex glass. Make sure it's microwave safe glass. You're going to need a stick. This looks like uh, something you would ice cakes with. This is what I use to stir the plastic up with. You're obviously going to need some kind of colorant. Um, this is MF color. I get it from Lure Parts Online, same place I get the, the liquid plastic from. Uh, they're, they're, they're fairly inexpensive and a little bit goes a long way so whatever color you're using. Today we're going to be using black which I know isn't the best color to be trying to showcase but I need some black plastic so uh, glitter. This is some cheap glitter I got from Walmart. It doesn't bleed so uh, probably contrary to popular belief you can skimp on glitter. Now I'm not saying you know that you go to Walmart and all glitter is going to work but whatever brand horizon group usa it seems to work for me so we're going to need some glitter if you want you can also skip the whole glitter step now there's two popular types of molds you can do the hand pour mold which essentially you melt your plastic with a steady hand you're going to pour it into the mold and it's going to be you know flush with the top you let it dry peel it out then you got to trim it up pretty easy now that's very you know cost-effective way because that's all you need you're done with your materials but they don't look as good as uh, ones you pour in a mold so if you're going the mold route uh, if you're just starting out I recommend the do it mold the essential series I've got a bunch of these uh, they're a lot smaller the you know it won't have very many cavities on the inside and also uh, the only downfall to these molds, in my opinion, is they they won't come out shiny. Like uh, if you went to the you know if you went to the store and bought some lures, you know they got a kind of got a gloss finish to them for whatever reason. Uh, when they cast these molds, whatever it's made out of, or I guess because the finish is a little rough, the the lures come out with a, a little more dull finish to them. But uh, you can get these molds. I think most of them are like thirty bucks a piece. Like this is the. Uh, this is the Ripper, three and a half inch Ripper. A really great uh, lure to use as a trailer for like on a chatterbait. And uh, you do three at a time. But if you get one of these, you're gonna have to get an injector too. 
And uh, basically this is just like a big syringe. The top comes off and you just, after you get your plastic melted, you suck it up and you inject your mold. Uh, one more thing that you're going to need is you got to keep your mold closed while you're injecting it. And uh, I just went to Lowe's and got some of these A clamps. And for these uh, molds right here, I just do two clamps to hold it together and it works fine. The only other thing you're going to need is a heat source to heat up your plastic. I use a microwave. You're not going to use your microwave that you have in your house. You're going to need to go buy a cheap microwave, uh, go to Walmart and get you one for like 30 bucks and it'll work fine. Alright, that's essentially it. Let's get to making some lures. First thing you're going to do is shake your soft plastic liquid. Once you think it's done mixing up, shake it a little bit more. You can't over mix this stuff. Now you're going to want to pour your desired amount of liquid into your Pyrex cup. Uh, one cup is a pretty good starting point. Uh, two cups is about the max I like to do. You just kind of have to play with it and see how far you can go with how much liquid. Now it's time to heat up your soft plastic liquid. You first pour it out, it's going to look kind of like milk, and as it heats up, it's going to get clearer and clearer. What I do is I start out one minute intervals, heat it for a minute, take it out, stir it, put it back in for another minute. Once I see it starting to get clear, I'll go ahead and back it down to 30 second intervals. It's going to kind of change properties, it's going to go from being very liquidy it's going to thicken up when it starts to change colors and then it's going to get real runny again. When it, when it gets clear and runny, it kind of lets you know that it's ready to be poured. Uh, you can use a thermometer. I would actually recommend doing that at first. Once it hits 350 degrees, you're ready to go. When your plastic gets heated up to the right temperature, you're going to go ahead and add your color to it. There's a bunch of different formulas you can find to make certain colors. Uh, like I said, I'm just doing black. And obviously, the more color you add, the more opaque it's going to be. If you want to be more translucent, add less color. But since I'm going with black, it's kind of hard to mess up. So just add your color and give it a good stir. Using glitter, now's the time to add it in. I just kind of eyeball it. No sense in trying to make this into some kind of exact science. Keep it fun. Don't overthink it. Give it another good mix after you add your glitter to it. Then I go ahead and put it back in the microwave for 30 more seconds. While it's in the microwave, I go ahead and get all my molds set up, ready for the pour. Go ahead and take your soft plastic liquid out of the microwave, give it one final stir. I've noticed that a lot of times, if you let it sit for a little bit, the glitter will fall down to the bottom. So stir it up, get the glitter towards the top and in the middle, and then grab your injector, fill it all the way up, and put it on top of your mold, and slowly inject it. Once you feel some resistance, stop and go to your next one. Do the same thing. One thing to keep in mind is when this plastic starts to dry, it kind of shrinks up. So if you watch the top of the molds, you can kind of see it start to sink in. You want to kind of work fast with this, especially with your injector because your liquid plastic starts solidifying in it where you can't inject anymore. But as soon as I get done with this very last one, I'm going to go back and squirt a little bit of liquid plastic on top of all the molds to keep it fill it completely up. If you let it sink in, it could get some air bubbles into your lure and mess them up. You don't want to do that. So make sure you top everyone off. Now you can go ahead and put whatever remaining plastic you have in your decker back into your Pyrex cup if it hasn't turned solid yet. And 
then I'll go ahead and put the Pyrex cup in the microwave to kind of keep it halfway warm if I'm going to pour some more baits. Now you're going to wait on your soft plastic to harden up. It doesn't really take a whole lot of time. Uh, it kind of depends on what lures you're using. The fatter they are, obviously, the longer it's going to take them to set up. Uh, but really, like with these right here, these are pretty fat themselves. Uh, maybe two minutes tops. You can go ahead and open your molds up and take them out. Before I open my molds up, I go ahead and clean my injector off, take the plastic off that's on the outside. You can take a tip off and then get the plastic that's inside out of it and then put it back together. About that time, your lure should be done, ready to open up. You're going to want to save all this plastic sprues that you cut off your lures themselves because you can reheat it and melt it back down and use it again. Now you can take your clamps off and open your lure molds up. Peel them out and get you some scissors and uh, cut the sprue off. You set the, the sprue or your the waste to the side because it's not waste like I said you can reuse it later. Now you have some soft plastics. Uh, I let mine sit to the side for maybe 15, 20 minutes before I put them in a bag, make sure they're fully cured. And I add a little bit of soft plastic oil to mine to keep them well lubricated, make sure they don't dry out. And that's it, ready to go fishing. <coughs> there you have it. It's a pretty easy process. Um, Pretty fun to do these. Uh, sky's the limit on making these soft plastics. I mean, any color you want, glitter. I mean, it's just so many options out there. If you like fishing with soft plastics and you kind of want to get creative with it, I highly recommend going out and getting some kind of starter kit and uh, checking this stuff out. I hope this video helps somebody, and uh, I'll see you next time. <laughs>